badminton, Jackie Dent. Jackie is a Waterloo Collegiate Institute graduate. And currently, she's uh, working or, or at school at the University of Waterloo, majoring in commerce. Uh, the highlights for 2023, as all of these nominees, they've had an exceptional year. Uh, as a Canadian uh, national championship, she placed first in singles, second in doubles. She participated in the senior national circuit with one gold in sing in singles, two golds in doubles, two silvers in mixed doubles. Internationally, uh, she competed second in doubles, two singles internationally on the under 19, three in mixed doubles in the under 19, and again two doubles in Hungary and again in Mexico, two doubles. On behalf of the nomination committee, congratulations, and I ask that Andrew come, come up and say a few words. Uh, hi everybody, thanks for having me. Um, thrilled to be here representing Jackie. Jackie is unfortunately uh, traveling for tournaments in Denmark right now, so she couldn't make it, but she, she emailed me and said this is super important, so yeah, I had, I had, to, I had to come here in her place. Uh, myself, I'm the coach at the University of Waterloo, as well as Jackie's home club, Casey Badminton. Um, I, I also had the privilege of watching Jackie uh, pick up the racket for the first time when she was four years old. She had half a racket and was just swinging it around. It was almost like a fly swatter. Um, but yeah, so super thrilled. Uh, one quick correction: she's unfortunately at the University of uh, Toronto. Well, however, however, oh. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Um, we're 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 all very bitter. Um, <laughs> uh, but she's been in the uh, KW community um, and has been training here for you know the last. 15 years, she picked up the racket when she was four years old, right? So she's been um, in this community for a long time. And, uh, you know, first of all, we're really thrilled that badminton is being recognized here uh, as well. We're, we're not as mainstream as most sports, uh, although it is a growing sport right now. And if, if you squint, a lot of the pickleball players are, are very good badminton players too. So at this, uh, um, now Jackie had an extremely good uh, 2023 and um, I think the story of her 2023 really started in 2022, where she was completing her grade 12 um, year in high school, and uh, she actually she would be training at the local club here uh, at KC, and she would also be traveling to Toronto multiple times a week to spar and compete with players in Toronto, and also she would we would sneak her into the University of Waterloo practices, and I wouldn't say sneak, but we uh, it's a funny story because. She was, uh, her older brother is actually on, on the team. And in order to get her uh, into our practices, we actually had to make her a coach. So she was uh, our 16-year-old coach of uh, the badminton team. But uh, her level and her ability was, I mean, her, her ability uh, is, was cl clearly good enough to be a coach <laughs> at the University of Waterloo. And she, she, we would bring her into 6 a.m. practices and then ship her off to high school. Um, and she did. She really grinded for an entire year, and as a junior, we were so thrilled that she would start. She started playing senior tournaments, and she kind of entered with not a lot of expectation. Um, you know, her first senior tournament, she would make a quarterfinal, and then maybe a semifinal. And we never thought that you know, at the senior nationals, basically the biggest event of the year for badminton and in Canada, uh, she would take gold, and that was an incredible moment in 2023. And we're all really proud. Um, She's continued her success, right? Uh, this, this past year, she's qualified to represent the senior national team at the world team event, which just happened in China a week ago. Um, she didn't, didn't quite make the Olympics this year, but we, we definitely uh, see a lot of potential. I've had the privilege to work with uh, a lot of past Olympians. Um, I've trained with a lot of past Olympians as well, and I can, I can attest that Jackie's talent is Right, right there, or even more than some of the athletes that we've had before. So, super, super grateful that uh, and honored that you guys are recognizing her talents, and we're really excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I always like to get University of Waterloo in there. Sorry about oh, that. Okay. Sorry you about that. Okay. I'm, I'm glad. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Laurier, I know, is another one as well. Um, <laughs> exactly. Uh, our next nominee uh, is baseball, Blake J Jacqueline. Uh, Jacqueline Blake is a graduate of Elmira District School. He's also 
um, now down in uh, the U.S. in Tennessee State University playing in the NCAA Division I. A couple of his exceptional highlights this year. He's the ACC Gold Glove Outfielder recipient. He's the Athletic Director's Honor Roll. He made first team all conference. He made sec second team all region. Um, and he also plays for the Kitchener Panthers. Uh, he's the youngest player ever to be named to the all-star team. He played 36 game and some of his incredible stats, uh, 3.3, 3, 0.361 average with 46 runs scored, 53 hits, four doubles, two triples, two home runs, 14 RBIs and 19 <laughs> stolen bases. The other thing that's impressive is he's sixth in overall in the IBL for batting average and he is fourth overall for stolen bases. Again, congratulations to Blake and I ask uh, Joe to come forward and say a few words. Thank you very much for this nominee. I know Blake is very excited, wish he could be here today, but uh, he's still playing ball down in, at Tennessee and uh, will be for the next couple of weeks. So. Um, I gotta admit, I missed the memo on having to give a speech, so uh, I'll probably make this a little brief. I thought he'd slide that in. Yeah, Joseph. that was nice touch, nice touch. Uh, um, I'm sure he would want to say, first of all, that um, as they always say in the Oscars, it's always great to be nominated, and uh, everybody here is a winner. So uh, I know he'd want to say that. Uh, secondly, um, as a parent, very proud of his achievements. Uh, he's had a great success, and in Blake's background, he, he really rolled the dice. Um, a couple of years ago, he was playing baseball in Michigan at a Division II school, wasn't getting the playing time that he had hoped for, and decided, you know what, I'm going to try my luck at a junior college. So he gave up a scholarship, went to a junior college in Arizona, and had some incredible success in that league, and uh, hence he got a full ride at uh, Tennessee. So very... Uh, very gutsy kid uh, and uh, very proud of him and certainly must thank the Kitchener Panthers organization because without them I don't think any of this would have happened. Uh, they really trusted him as a 19 year old playing in the outfield for this organization going up against former minor leaguer pitchers and uh, some like incredible talent in that league and he was able to uh, play and show and um, it really gave him the confidence to move on in his career. So. Again, thank you for this nomination, and thank you for all the work you do putting in. It's exceptional, and uh, thanks so much again. You're welcome. Thanks. Ah! Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, our next nominee, bobsled, Alex Klein. Uh, again, another Waterloo Collegiate graduate, and then went to Brant Uni Bryant University in the States majoring in business admin. A couple of her highlights, just as a side note. She started out to be a basketball player on a scholarship, uh, was the female athlete of the year at her college. She was first team all conference and had a professional career in Europe, then decided to change sports. Um, and this year she is now a Bob Sledder. Uh, she won two silvers at the North American Cup. She represents Team Canada as a break woman. Uh, she also, it, uh, competed internationally. Uh, she came second twice in the two women bobsled event and mono bob event um, in Lake Placid. She also became uh, represented Canada at Whistler BC and placed first uh, with a gold medal and again represented Canada at Park City, Utah with a first place gold and a second place silver. Uh, she also competed internationally in Austria and again in Germany and we are very excited to have her as a 2023 nominee and I ask that Mary, her mother, come up and say a few words. Thank you very much uh, for the nomination. I was just speaking with Alex on FaceTime as I pulled into the parking lot and she was very, she wanted me to express on her behalf uh, her thanks for her nomination. And she does wish she could be here, although she just landed that morning in Munich and she's training for 10 weeks. Then we'll come back here, we'll move to Calgary and we'll concentrate on the 2026 Olympic team that hopefully she will make, uh, taking place in Cortina, Milan, uh, Italy. 
Uh, so that's her goal. She did start out as a basketball player. She got very ill and had to come home and was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis Crohn's. She is now a spokesperson, one of their student rep uh, athlete representatives for Get Gutsy Canada. So she's able to do podcasts and speak with uh, various groups and just before flying to Munich she was in Sydney Australia also on a panel uh, for mental health so she loves doing that particularly work with women um, and adolescents and with uh, Crohn's and colitis coming up through the ranks unfortunately with younger and younger people um, she really loves to help people in that sense and has spoken to, to various groups about that. So that's what she does. How do you get into bobsleighing? Uh, she spoke to someone and she didn't she couldn't continue with basketball and she decided at six foot one that she might fit into a bobsleigh at the back and she is a break woman. That is what she is doing. And her claim to fame at this moment is she's the tallest bobsledder female in the world. <laughs> that's what that's her claim to fame at this moment. But she's done very well. Her perseverance through illness, she always does go back to the fact that your health is the most most important thing. So all her medications that she has to continually upgrade and refrigerate, take over to Europe and all through North America, uh, she knows that's the most important thing and so far so good. So she does wear a helmet going 148k down the Whistler Mountain. Uh, I just have a lucky charm of hers in my pocket when I'm watching and just hope she makes it down there without crashing. She has crashed a few times, but sort of minor crashes. So that's it. I'm a very proud mama. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next nominee, cycling, Ethan Powell. Again, Ethan is a graduate of, well, he's actually still at school, at uh, Resurrection Catholic Secondary School. He had an incredible 2023. He's a junior track world championship gold medalist, the first ever in our area. He's also received a bronze medal in the junior track world championship. He's had multiple, multiple Ontario championships in including many multiple first place, seconds and thirds, competing at not only the provincial level, the Canadian level, the national championship in Edmonton, as well as in Quebec. He's, he placed first in stage one, second overall, excuse me. He's now competing internationally again. Um, but what I would like to do is welcome his coach, uh, Rob Good. Please, Rob. Thank you to the uh, committee, appreciate all the uh, support and uh, Ethan is absolutely the my best athlete ever. I've coached for a hundred years and it's the first time we've been able to get a world champion in Kitchener-Waterloo in the cycling ranks. Ethan last year also won the Canadian Championships out in Edmonton. Uh, as a junior boy, the competition is very, very deep and uh, he broke away with about 5K to go and, and won a, about a 125 kilometer bike race. Um, we thought it was over at, at that point, but when he went to Columbia and won the World Championship, it's probably the best 22 laps ever on the velodrome if you've seen track cycling at the Olympics. Uh, it's a 250 meter track. It's the best 22, final 22 laps ever in a bike race at any level. He lapped the field twice against other nations, uh, Italy, Belgium. He's in Belgium right now training and racing. Uh, England, France, all the top nations, Australia, New Zealand, all the top nations in the world were represented. And he lapped the field twice and shocked the Italian rider who had the race won until the last lap. So a fantastic uh, year for Ethan in 23. Uh, thank you very much to the nominating committee. Thank you. Great. Thank Great. Thanks very much, Rob. Our next nominee, hockey, Caitlin Kramer. Caitlin is a Resurrection uh, Catholic Secondary School graduate, and she will be attending the University of Minnesota next year on a 2024 scholarship. 
couple of incredible highlights in 2023. The IIHF Women's Under 18 World Championship, she placed first with a gold medal. One of the interesting things is that she scored four goals in the gold game, gold medal game. She scored a hat trick in a span of six minutes and 44 seconds. Incredible. The fourth goal in the third period, what made her the tournament leading 10th goal scoring record, the most ever in a Canadian, at a Canadian championship internationally. Uh, that's fantastic. Caitlin represents Team Canada under 18. Uh, she also represents uh, Waterloo Ravens and uh, Kitchener Waterloo Rangers before that. And just another matter of interest, 18 goals makes her the all-time leading goal scorer for Canada's national under 18 team. We are very, very excited to welcome Caitlin Kramer and congratulations. Um, hi, um, I'm really grateful to be um, nominated amongst such great athletes. Um, the community has done a lot for me and supported me My up, up until now um, and it's just been a great community to be a part of and to give back to you and I'm really grateful for this nomination. Thank you. Sorry. Great, thank you very much, Caitlin. Our next no nominee, hockey, Nick Hague. Nick represented Vegas Golden Knights and he is a Stanley Cup champion in 2023. It's the first Stanley Cup that the Vegas Golden Knights has won. Some of his accomplishments, he signed the contract with the Golden Knights in September 2017, and he was the only player drafted by the Golden Knights to play in the 2023 Stanley Cup team. He's known as a two-way defenseman. For the season of, in 2023 and 2024, he played 81 games, uh, three goals, 14 assists, and is known as an exceptional two-way defenseman. As a quote, from Kitchener Mayor. We are so proud of the home team. We are so proud of hometown hockey inspiration Nick. The entire community watched with great pride and excitement as the Golden Knights won the Stanley Cup. Congratulations to Nick. I would ask his father, his mother, who's here, to come up and say a few words. Well, thank you very much. Um, uh, my name is Bob Hagen. I'm here with my wife, Sheila. We're thrilled to be here to uh, represent Nicholas. Unfortunately, he can't be here. I was happy to hear that, a that the awards are based on last year's accomplishments, not this year's, because <laughs> Vegas, unfortunately, was just eliminated in the playoffs uh, the other night. So, But, uh, you know, it still gives me goosebumps to think about last year and the Stanley Cup run that Vegas went on. It, um, it uh, As a young kid growing up and playing hockey, you dream of uh, winning the cup and raising that cup above your head and uh, Nick was fortunate enough to be able to fulfill that dream uh, on a large part due to a lot of the things that happened in this community. The, uh, Nick was uh, involved in the Learn to Skate programs, uh, the volunteers, the coaches that he had through all through Kitchener Minor Hockey were, were just exceptional and uh, really played a huge role in developing Nick as a hockey player and as a person. Uh, I would say that um, that last year was the most fun Nick has ever had playing hockey for obvious reasons. Uh, but also as his parents, uh, it was the most fun we've ever had watching our son play the sport. Uh, there were some nerve wracking moments last year as we went through the playoffs, but uh, it, was, it was a great thrill. You know, I was chatting with Nick and um, about all the great athletes that come out of this community. And uh, it, uh, it really is exceptional and amazing. He, um, you know, he, he's to have his name in the uh, to be spoken in, in consideration and all the athletes here today uh, is truly amazing to be uh, considered amongst all the great people that have come out of this community. So uh, that's really special to to be recognized. I want to thank the uh, the people who organized this event and and the, going on for 25 years. That's fantastic. The nomination committee for recognizing Nick. 
Uh, I know he is really appreciative and, uh, and very honored to be one of this year's nominees. So thank you very much. Appreciate it, and good luck to everybody. Appreciate it. Great. Thanks very much, Bob. Next nominee, Horseshoe Pitching, is Drew Becker. Uh, Drew is a Kitchener uh, native, uh, and he is also the Canadian Horseshoe Champion in first place consecutively for the last five years. Uh, he also competed at the World Horseshoe Championship, and he had entered uh, a very, very difficult game against uh, someone who has dominated the world scene, and Drew became second. Uh, in terms of horseshoe pitching, this might mean something to a bunch of you. I had to ask what the stats were all about. But at the World Championship, he played 15 games, which represented 804 tosses, uh, of which 629 were ringers, and in the final, he had 101 toss, which represented 86 ringers, represent 82.6% of the times that he threw the horseshoe, it was a ringer. Uh, he also competed at various levels throughout Canada. Uh, he became the men's A first place champion uh, with a 14-1 record. He maintains the Ontario Provincial Championships for the last 15 years, and he's ranked number one in Canada. Uh, Drew is not able to make it here today, but interestingly enough, Drew is very excited about this nomination. Uh, he wanted me to remind everybody that he is a six-time Ontario Junior Champion, two-time Junior Champion, Canadian Champion, six-time Ontario Men's Champion, and seven-time Ontario Doubles Champion as well. So on behalf of Drew, thank you to my nomination committee. <laughs> Our next nominee, Dane Smith, lacrosse. Dane again is a, uh, his education was at Huron Heights in uh, Kitchener. He had an exceptional 2023. Uh, with the Buffalo Bandits, he won the National Lacrosse League and was a champion. He played for Team Canada at the World Lacrosse, getting a silver medal. His stats are incredible. 2023 Cup Champion, 2023 MVP, 2023 All-League First Team, and in um, as Roger has taught us a lot about uh, lacrosse, there's so many switching on the, on the field and, and on the, uh, that it, his stats are incredible. He played 18 games, 36 goals, 96 assists, total points of 132, and his points per game is 7.33. In addition to all of that success, he also played in the Man Cup in the Six Nations and came first place. He also played for Team Canada at the Worlds. Again, Dane cannot be here today, but uh, again, he's emailed us to say thank you very much. So on behalf of the nomination committee, congratulations to Dane. Another nominee, Long Drive might ask, what's the long drive? This is for Kelly Rut Rutney. Uh, Kelly was born in, Canada, born in Waterloo, St. David's Catholic High School. Uh, her highlight is she won a world championship and became first place. Just a couple of her accomplishments, her ball speed when in driving the golf ball is 175 miles per hour with a, a swing speed of 120. Her longest drive was uh, in the at the World Championship was 352.9 yards, and she plays in the Open 35 plus division, but she competes in all of the divisions at a younger age. Uh, she currently is ranked third in the world, and she per uh, uh, performs in both the professional long drivers as well as uh, the Canadian National Championship drivers, of which she uh, one as well with a drive of 358 yards. Her longest drive ever uh, in these competitions was 367 yards. And again, uh, Kelly cannot be here today, but again says thank you very much. So to Kelly. Okay. Another nomination, nominee, powerlifting. Cash, it is incredible what you have done in this year. Cash is here today, he's a resident of Kitchener. 
Uh, he's a graduate of the University of New England, University of Iowa, and, the, and a doctor of family medicine. Highlight, he has a world record, holds the Guinness World Record for bench pressing 7,959 pounds bench pressed in 30 seconds. Incredible. Uh, he also holds the, became first in the WPC Canadian Powerlifting National Championships in the Men's Open Division, first place. Also in the World Powerlifting Congress, he was the world record holder in the 198 pound class, and he holds the Ontario Powerlifting record holder in the 93 uh, class as well. His accomplishments were first place in the powerlifting event in Belleville. The United Powerlifting Association, he's a 2022 national record holder. He's also an Iowa State champion, World Powerlifting Congress junior record holder, and the record again still stands. Um, on behalf of the nomination committee, I'd like to welcome Cash. Okay, thank you, Jean. Thank you for the nomination. It's always hard to come up and talk about yourself. <laughs> uh, but uh, thank you for the nomination. Big thanks to the, all the event organizers. I can definitely appreciate how much work it takes to set up something like this. Um, so the 2023 season, well, I, I should say 2022-2023 season was a year where I essentially came out of retirement after having not competed for a number of years. And uh, I decided that I want to go all the way this time, and uh, I was able to start off at the regional level, work up to the provincial uh, national level, and uh, qualify for the world championships coming up in, in just about two, three weeks from now in Texas. Um, so uh, I think I got into powerlifting back in 20, 2013, and I'd competed for a number of years. I went to the world championships back in 2015 prior to going to uh, medical school, and then I essentially took a pause from competing, at least at the high level, for a number of years. And then after moving to Waterloo region, I <clears throat> rebooted my powerlifting career. So I think in contrast to some of the folks here, I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not a native of the Waterloo region. I'm from Ajax, Ontario originally. Um, but big thank you again. Track and field nominee, Ben Flanagan. St. Mary's High School grad, University of Michigan grad, and is currently uh, master, taking his Master of Social Work at the University of Michigan. Highlight for Ben, he's a Canadian national championship with a gold medalist in the 5,000 meter. He also competed internationally in Chicago uh, in the mile, the indoor, with a time of four minutes and 10 seconds. Uh, he is, came in fifth place in Boston in the 3,000 meter race. Also in Ann Arbor, 3,000 meter, first place. Boston University, uh, the event, the John Thomas event, the classic indoor event, 5,000 meter, first place. In Windsor, Ontario, 1,500 meter, first place with a personal best. And the track fast outdoor event in California, 5,000 meter, uh, third place. Again, he's competed internationally as well as uh, uh, nationally. He won the first place for the 5,000 meter at the Bell Canadian Canadian Championship. And also in Budapest, Hungary, he was 11th in his heat in the 5,000 meter. He's had an, an incredible year uh, in, in competing not only locally, uh, nationally, uh, but internationally as well. So on behalf of the nomination committee, congratulations, Ben, and we welcome Ron. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, as everyone else here with our athletes, um, uh, Ben is super excited to be here. Uh, what well, two have been here. But he's, of course, competing himself and training. So he asked if I would come and uh, uh, accept this nomination and show our support for the group here for that nomination. This is Ben's third nomination. Um, and uh, he's, he's got a big year this year, which we're very excited about. Um, in 2023, his highlight was um, getting a world standard, uh, Olympic standard, uh, and the 5K at 13 minutes and four seconds, uh, which will qualify him for the Paris Olympics uh, this summer. Um, so he's uh, uh, in Ann Arbor now where he's residing, um, setting himself up for the Canadian Championships. He's running two this year, 
One will be in Ottawa, the 10K Row Championships, uh, which will be in two weeks. And then about a month later, he'll be competing in Montreal for the Canadian Championships in the 5K. Um, so those are all his kind of his, his big milestones before his biggest event in August. So thank you for the committee for the nomination. Um, he, he loves his city. Um, he loves competing for his country. And he is super excited to uh, do that again in 2024. Thank you. Thanks very much, Ron. Our next nominee, track and field, Foster Malik. Again, a graduate of St. Mary's High School. He's currently at Boston University. Uh, he graduated with a finance and business in 2023 and is now taking a Master of Science in Financial Management. As highlights for Foster, Boston University, a mile, he broke the four minute mile with a 3.59, excellent. Uh, he also competed in the under 23 international championships with a 1500 meter, again with a time of 4.02, placing third. In 2023, Chris actually has broken the four minute mile three times. He's competed at the Duke International, placing second in the 800 meter, placing second again at the 5 1500 meter. In the Wake Forest International, uh, he competed in the 1500 meter place first with a personal best, again breaking the four minute mile. He also competed in Florida as well as he competed in uh, North Carolina and also he was a part of the four man 800 meter relay team indoor uh, and he competed second. Uh, on behalf of the nomination committee, I'd like to ask Chris, his father, to come forward. Thanks very much, Gene. Um, Foster's, uh, first of all, he, uh, he would want to thank everybody and, and congratulate all the nominees. Uh, he would love to be here. Um, he's uh, uh, just finishing up his master's right now, and uh, once he's done that, then he's got um, regionals for uh, the NCAA championships, and then if he gets through that, which we hope he will this year, um, he'll get to the finals, and that is in Oregon in uh, early June. Um, Foster uh, was originally a, a hockey player like uh, so many other kids and coming up and eventually switched in, in grade 10 at the uh, uh, coaxing of his, his uh, teachers and his uh, coaches. And um, he, uh, it was a good decision for him. Uh, he just seemed to excel and uh, was very fortunate to get the uh, scholarship at, at Boston University. He would uh, want me to acknowledge Ben Flanagan who is someone who's so inspirational to him um, a fellow in m and &E and, uh, and they, they of course know each other from, from the track circles, but uh, he, uh, uh, he's thrilled to be nominated um, and uh, yeah, thank you to the organizing uh, committee and the nomination committee and good luck to the well, fellow nominees. Great, thank thanks. you. Okay. Our next nominee, volleyball, Corey Shaner, Shaner. <laughs> I apologized in advance. Uh, again, a graduate of Bell, uh, Blue Vale Co uh, Collegiate, and currently he is at Trinity Western University taking his Bachelor of Minister Administration. Highlight for 2023, member of Team Canada, World Championship Under 21 uh, team. Uh, he also competed in Havana, Cuba. Uh, his accomplishments, Team Canada, uh, placed 11th in the FIBB Men's Under-21 World Championships. Team Canada also competed, as I mentioned, in Cuba, placing third, and they qualified there for the World Championship. Uh, for the U Sports Championship, he placed his team placed first, and the Canada Western Championship in 2022-23 year for the Trinity Western, they placed second. He played 22 matches. Uh, here's some stats, 85 sets, 122 kills, 1.44 kills per set, total attacks 244. Uh, he is currently uh, again with Trinity University, uh, they are in second place at, in the standings and he is representing Team Canada as a middle blocker. I'd like to welcome his father, Joel.
Thanks very much to the organization for the nomination. Um, Corey is training right now at the National Training Center in Gatineau, working with the U21 team and the senior B team. So he was kind of a walking billboard for minor sports, played hockey with Ludwig Meyer. Uh, he played Tigers baseball for uh, Waterloo. He actually was a predator. One of his coaches, Kelly, is here. Um, and he actually did that one year, all three at the same time. Well, that was a lot of driving around. So he was always proud to represent the city or to see a few times in hockey and uh, just honored to be uh, nominated. So thanks for that. Great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. So on behalf of the uh, Athlete of the Year Committee as well as the Nomination Committee, please uh, join me in saying a congratulations to each of the nominees for this year.